Hi everyone and welcome back to Curly and Yarny. Here it's Milena and today we will be weaving a spring scarf. So depending on where you are in the world right now, maybe spring has been uh, started for a while now, but uh, here in a very cold Canada, it's only uh, starting. Uh, we have seen the last of snow, I hope, uh, last week, uh, and we hope to see uh, flowers very soon. So I put on my spring dress and we'll make this spring scarf. today's video uh, I will have many parts in it so uh, at the beginning I will be telling you more uh, specifically about uh, the project so the yarn news the colors and everything like that um, then I will talk more about how I warp uh, this uh, project if there's a little particularity because I doubled uh, the threads in uh, the slot and the hole so I'll show you how I do this and uh, then I will tell you more about the pattern so the warp pattern and the weft pattern and at the end uh, we will all see a uh, this beautiful spring scarf unroll. For the scarf, I have chosen some very pastel colors, uh, and I will weave it with a uh, 8 to 10 cell from Maris Brassard. Uh, so the colors I have here are teal. This is uh, in French vieux bleu, so old blue. I also have VAR, so old gold, <laughs> and brown for brown. So all of uh, those uh, colors are available through uh, the Rollerby's website. Uh, so there's a link in the description down below if you want to check it out. So just make sure you know this is an affiliate link. So if you click on it and make a purchase, I would receive a small commission from it that would help me keep going and keep making more videos. So uh, this scarf I will be making in my 12.5 heddle. I will warp 20 inches of my heddle. So I am using tinsel for this project and the reason for this is because I really really love the effect of it. It has a very silky, uh, shiny look to it. So uh, the finished woven piece is really looks, almost looks like it is was uh, woven in silk. Uh, but it's uh, actually tinsel and it's way more affordable. Uh, also, uh, the touch is very soft, uh, so it's very soft to the skin. Uh, so I find, I find that this yarn is very suitable for a uh, scarf. Okay, so uh, I have started warping uh, the loom and uh, to do this project, uh, I need to double my threads in my heddle. And what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, there will be two threads in each hole and in each slot of my heddle. So uh, let me show you how I do this. So as you know, when we uh, direct warp a loom, we pull loops out of uh, the uh, out of the heddle, uh, usually in the slot, and this gives us two threads that we will later uh, re-thread the heddle. So we will keep one of the thread into the slot, and we will put the second thread into the uh, hole that is next to it. If you want to double uh, the thread, so having two threads in the slot and two threads in the hole, um, the best way to go uh, around to do this is simply to pull uh, one loop in the slot and one loop in the hole and all the way through. So this will magically uh, <laughs> double the threads and also the head hole will be threaded. So once I'm done warping the loom, I will not have to uh, go back and re-thread my heddle as everything will be already set in the slot and in the holes. So uh, let's, let me show you how it's, uh, how it's done. So the last thread that I put was uh, in the slot. So we see here there's two threads that are loose here. So I will put my next one in the hole. Uh, so if you have the hook, it's much easier to use the, small, uh, part, the smaller part of the hook for this part. So I will go into the next hole and I will pull out a loop. So now I'm back and so I put my two threads from the hole and now I need to do uh, to go through the slot that is right next to this hole. And so here I go and I pull my loop. 
Now let's do it one more time from another angle. So now I am at the back of the loom. As you can see, here is the back beam, the back apron. And so here I will take my thread here. And so the last uh, thing, the last thread that I threaded uh, was here in uh, the slot. So for the next one, I need to go to the hole right next to it and pull a loop out of it. Now I need to go to the slot that is right next to this hole and I will pull another loop. And I go like this until the end. So I used Excel to plan uh, the pattern for this uh, scarf today. Uh, so if you want to learn more about how I plan my patterns using Excel, there's a video right here. Uh, I also have a blog post about this. And if you want to have more uh, detail about the pattern that I will be uh, weaving today, I will also include it in the description down below, a link to my website with all the thread counts and all the details and the exact uh, color name. Uh, so feel free to go check it out. So here is uh, the pattern for this scarf today. Uh, so it's a very simple pattern. Uh, I've used very pastel colors and a uh, very simple design uh, because I feel like that really uh, means spring to me. And so for today's video, I will be mostly covering uh, the part where it's more complicated in the pattern. So uh, the where I have this little color pattern that I call. And um, so this color pattern will happen twice uh, three times in the warp uh, so I will explain to you how I did the middle part so I will start by going briefly over the first part of the warping process then I will talk about this and uh, for the rest it's uh, the same <laughs> um, and for if you want more details about the pattern again this will all be provided on my website so and now I have already warped half of my loom, the other half is uh, yet to come. Uh, I'm going to walk you through what I did so far and I will also tell you what I still have to do. And so for the first part of uh, the pattern, it's I threaded for uh, let's say 16 holes and 16 uh, slots uh, all together. Then I did uh, the part of the pattern where I, have, where, where I have stripes of the other colors. And then uh, I came up with warping uh, the uh, teal again uh, for uh, 35 um, slots and 35 holes <laughs> that I worked. Uh, so now I am ready. I'm in the middle of my scarf, so I'm ready to uh, do uh, the sequence of the colors again. So uh, let's do it. I did not cut uh, the tail, uh, so the tail is still uh, the thread where I was still at is still hanging there. So this will keep. Uh, I will not cut it and reattach it because I'm only doing two loops of the, the brown color. Uh, so I don't feel the need to just cut it and reattach it. When I will be warping till again, I will simply take it where I'm at and it will not mess up with anything. So now let's go with the brown. So the brown I need to attach. So I will need two loops, so a uh, one loop in the hole where I am at and one loop in the slot right next to it. So now I can cut it, fix it and I keep on going with the teal color for four loops this time. Again, I do not cut the tail, I left it loose right here and I will continue with the gold. I will attach it here. And I'm doing two loops. And my tail yarn is right behind it so I just take it where uh, where I have left off with it and I keep on doing four loops
so uh, now I have started weaving uh, this scarf um, so the pattern is again very simple very similar to the one that we have in the warp and um, so uh, as again the teal will be my most pre predominant color for uh, this project so uh, basically what I'm doing I'm I'm doing square of teals and then I'm doing I'm repeating the pattern that I see in the warp into the weft okay so now let's Let's check um, I have woven teal until 4 inches. So I am now ready uh, to do uh, the uh, little color pattern that I have here. Uh, so I haven't cut... Um, here's my shuttle. <laughs> I haven't cut the threads uh, from uh, this shuttle. Uh, so uh, this will... Um, and I will not have to cut it. Uh, so let me show you how I do it. Uh, because uh, the stripes that I do of the colors are so thin that I, would, I will not have to cut this and uh, the threads will simply uh, follow along without making a bulky uh, selvage. Uh, so with my extra shuttle I will put the colors on uh, so my first stripes will be uh, brown. So I take my brown and here my shuttle is 24 inches wide so it's a little bit wider than the project I'm doing uh, so I need to do my stripes, I, I do two picks, so I go back and forth, uh, which means that it's basically twice this, the size of my shuttle. So I just tape it here with masking tape, and then I do one and two, and I'll let it hang a little bit more than a uh, twice the size of my shuttle to make sure that I have uh, enough uh, yardage to have it hanging here. I have done my two stripes of brown, so now I can go back with teal. Uh, so in the warp I had uh, four uh, times teal. So. Uh, uh, I had two holes and two uh, slots of teal, so I'm, yeah, I'm going to do again four picks of teal. The only difference is that in my uh, warp I have doubled the threads, as in my whiff I have not doubled it. And uh, so here the thread goes gently around the edge and almost doesn't show. And I will do my four picks of uh, teal. So here I change the view so that you can see better how I do uh, the changing of the colors. Uh, so as I said, I am now at the, at the, the two picks of uh, the golden, uh, old gold. <laughs> and I go through the shed. I left a little bit of the thread hanging out. I beat and I go back into the up position. And here my uh, thread, I did the most, uh, outermost thread would be this one. So I go around it to make sure the thread is secure because the thread is going back into the same shed as the other one. So if I wasn't doing this, then it would unweave. <laughs> so we don't want that. We want it to go around uh, one of the threads and then I make it go a few, maybe a half an inch uh, into the project and out again. Uh, I make it go out from out of the threads between two threads like that and I do. And now I am back into uh, the down position. I go all the way through. I fix my selvage. A bit. And I have a little little bit left. <laughs> so I go around and I make it go out here. So just like that. Uh, so while on the loom we see a bit more that here because it kind of doubles the yarn when I do this change of color it is a little more bulky we see it on the brown it's a bit more bulkier than here but once it gets finished really we don't see it that much um, so the teal is still hanging from here I'm back in the up position and I can simp simply start weaving again And now I can start weaving with the teal again. So I will again uh, be weaving with teal for 4 inches and then I will do uh, this little pattern again. So very simple, very uh, good.
good looking too. Uh, so sometimes simple things also uh, look, uh, look out very good. So uh, I'll meet you again at the end uh, once I'm done weaving. So this is it, the scarf is now done and ready for spring to, uh, to arrive in Canada. Uh, so uh, in, uh, in total I will for about 2 meters or if you prefer 80 centimeters. Uh, I, uh, after wet finishing uh, the scarf was about 76 inches long or if you prefer 1.9 meters. Uh, I like my scarf very long so this is why I, make, I made it this long. Uh, just so you know that if you want to have the same measurements as I did, I did need uh, to use a second bobbin of teal uh, to finish, his, finish it off so I use one hole and a little bit of this one. Uh, so this being said, I really hope uh, you like this video and uh, I hope to see you next time. Bye bye!